With Team Axe Chuck Axgbly came to an end and seemingly won the title of Biggest Loser Prince succeeded in convincing his previous rival Governor Nancy Dupp to support him in the vice presidential race Michael Prince's rise to the president is almost certain thanks to Governor Dump Garner's support and influence but there's something about the discussions that preceded that startling admission the dialogue's well-chosen wording. And the scene's fitting conclusions lead me to conclude that Chuck and A's intricate plan involves a prince dumb up ticket without triple quadruple or even cannibal crosses it wouldn't be billions so I predict a wild farewell ride next week we discover that Axe has already set up shop in Manhattan welcome back Taylor Maffey and Helena his former employees two days after he disrupted Prince's black time event even Mike Prince Axe's first guest is waiting for him in a conference room Axe and Prince's antagonistic meeting is the origin of a lot of the episodes herky-jerky time jumping this strategy is popular with billions it has always made me nuts the two billionaires brag about all the subage moves they've done in the last 24 hours outwitting everyone and totally baffling me in the process through a series of flashbacks in the early hours after the event we witness more of Philip's misgivings emerging throughout these memories Prince's prodigy is not happy about his orders to Go to cash in order to protect Michael Prince's capital from any financial attack backed by Axe Philip meets with Souter later long after dawn and all of a sudden his drip of doubt grows into a cascade of suspicion he can claim he doesn't have any doubts but the guy does if his uncle ever disagrees with Prince Philip asks him then when Scooter declines to respond to his query he blatantly declares that he believes Prince would be a better hedge fund manager than I do's I'm eager to follow this too. Its next chapter we on the same period Bradford Luke convinces Prince to approach Governor Dumop gaining his favor by threatening to provide the billionaire with presidential intelligence briefings acquire Dumop and establish yourself as the front runner become the front runner and presto he's on the roster for daily briefings Taylor Mason is showing herself to be no slouch on the busiest morning in billions history. They make fruitless attempts to kidnap dollar bill Ben Kim Ryan Victor and Tuck Law Victor Bill Dollar and Ryan Reefus to part over their money but the only ones who lose their jobs are Ben and Tuck Victor Dollar Bill and Ryan were able to keep their MPC employment because they spoke clean to Prince about their morning recruitment however despite turning down Taylor's invitation Van and Tuck still faced consequences for their deceit and possible manipulation of emotions I honestly do feel bad for them too but by now why haven't they figured out how to control their emotions in this industry acts quickly tells Prince to tone down his ego when he is gloating. Over Axe's failure at poaching he is still a cockled after all all at that point Andy Prince announces that she has done upholding their traditional marriage image as we come to repacking a luggage she will present at campaign events when required but other than that her husband who set up her lover's capture by the Chinese government can handle himself Prince still has more boasting to do though he is really enthusiastic with his deduction. That Chuck attempted to divert his attention from the presidential contest by accusing many of his enterprises of engaging in illegal business practices newsprint learned via mandatory Chuck's SDNY co-worker and Kate Sacker her most recent source this is when Corey Sto treats us to a sketch of Chuck Rhodes mental process complete with football illusions and lots of blathering while he stands in front of a whiteboard not even Bradford Kate or Scooter are giving prints. The are you okay dude look I adore how billions is now just making light of itself. You see Prince nearly missed his one and only opportunity. To meet with Governor Dumop while she was still in New York because he was preoccupied with Chuck's upcoming indictments luckily Prince straightened things out with a little ingenuity and before the Montana governor left town that evening he insisted that she stop by stately Prince Manor but before Prince can yell I win you lose as he marches out of Axe Global Axe. Gives a summary of his own actions from the day before Chuck and Wendy met at SDNY around dawn to kick things off Axe is what's in it. For me is essentially established in this sequence Axe is general throughout the conversation was like it they'll love it so I don't think we've heard about it yet despite Chuck and Wendy's entreaties to take down Prince for the good of the world of course something changed but how when the three arrive at the Axe global offices the conversation concerning Governor Dumop and her role in their plan enters a coded area what the wrong thing is in this situation. 
8 is unknown to us Axe goes all out with the private separate reels before Governor Dunlop meets with Prince but as I mentioned we eat a few few bite-sized portions not the entire meal Axe feeds the governor promises like a memorable time and a trip to the White House in addition to delicious meatballs if she follows A's instructions which one is Governor Dunlop and Chuck then go out to drink and during their conversation she asks Chuck to clarify. How Axe differs from Prince it's understandable. That she would want to know Chuck however does a good job of pointing out the difference Prince is a monster who goes by a guise of kindness whereas Axe is a self-aware monster yes that is known to us we still don't know what Axe and Chuck have in store for Dunlop and this scene only serves as a tease Chuck says he can assist the governor win the long-term game and just as Dunlop asks him to walk her through it we cut back to the Axe Prince conference room spat. Just in time for a smug Prince too. Brag about his own late night meeting with Dunlop the flashback of which also cuts off right at the juiciest part she asks him what he can offer it turns out that Prince's hostile visit to Axe Global was solely intended to extend an invitation to Team Max Chuck for peace talks he no longer has any fears since he is so certain that he is imprisoned by Governor Dunlop that evening Chuck Axe Wendy Wags and Taylor are on one side of a heated discussion that takes place at the A Global offices. Bradford Philip Kate Prince and Scooter on the other even now it seems like the ambiguous dialogue is meant to mislead the audience Prince then gives the worst possible start to the proceeding stating that all great presidents dictate peace. Through strength and making provocative allusions to preventing war and bludge on all sides however it does seem as though the Axe Chuck side is purposefully making fun of the others as part of their performance everyone on the Axe Chuck side frowns but very dramatically when Governor Dunlop enters the room and joyfully declares that she has chosen to support the Mike Prince ticket as his feet recall how last week. I disapproved of Kate Sacker extreme attitude I believe everyone is acting this way. There are undoubtedly hidden agenda items on the list though perhaps not for the same reasons Prince adds salt to everyone's wounds as soon as Dunlop leaves by declaring that a peace treaty is necessary because he will undoubtedly become president a peace agreement Prince pledges not to use the presidential authority to harm or bring charges against any members of Team Max Chuck in return for their ceasing or attacks. On him from the audience's vantage point Team Max Chuck appears completely. Defeated and at a loss for what to do in these final minutes to get out of the five of them watch MSNBC announce the Prince Dunlop news with a solemn expression Bradford joyfully declares that Prince's name has been added to the list of people who receive presidential intelligence briefings when they are back at stately Prince Manor not only has he minted but he's also been invited to Camp David. I'm quite skeptical of what we just witnessed since this is simply too much positive news to one. Person Prince is in my opinion precisely where Team Axe Chu wants him in addition the narrative behind the scene that initiated this entire season is still unknown to us the one where Prince drops a bunch of explosives and throws a vase into Wendy's office upon meeting a man at the South Bar subway station Kate was a little taken aback by the fact that Prince had her following Taylor's presence at Ryan's farewell shows how proud they are of her for escaping the financial maze before she lost her spirit.